Hey everybody, it's me Liv. So today is actually going to be a two-for-one special in which I am creating both a tag and an art journal page that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to really focus on using the mica powders that came in our uh, kit this month for the Tress Jolie. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is actually putting down the mica powder into this mold. If you're wondering which mold this is, this is from a company called Zori Inks and they create a lot of fantastic molds. Now, um, I am going to go ahead and put all the different color powders down all over, just using a regular old paintbrush. And these powders are not wet at all. They are purely being put down and spread out. Um, again, you can use whatever variety of colors you'd like. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and speed through this process, but you can see that I'm using three different types of powders here, um, the green, the yellow, and the pink that came um, with the uh, Tress Jolie September kit. Um, so you can use whatever variety you'd like. Now this would work with pretty much any type of mica powder that you're using. So if you do have any in your stash, definitely give this a try. Um, I am going to actually be putting resin on here versus using any type of clay. Um, I haven't really tried it with clay, so I think it would work just as well, but um, I'll have to give that a shot probably in another video. So once I have that down, like I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and pour the resin. Now for me, I'm using some resin that I have in my stash that I got at my local craft store. Um, most of the time, the resins are, um, you know, a equal parts of each other when you're pouring it in. So just remember that I'm only using a very small amount that I've already pre-mixed. And then I'm going to pour it in. This particular resin is not a fast setting resin. So because of that... Um, I did have to leave this over for 24 hours. So as you are working with the resin, if you need to pull it into a small crevices, because this particular mold does have a lot, I usually just use a good old fashioned popsicle stick to kind of bring that resin um, over into those areas. So now it's been 24 hours later. Let's pop this out and see what it looks like. Oh, I just absolutely love the way that it came out, um, you know, and now we're going to pop out the other one where I stirred it in. And I think this came out fantastic, both of them. If you use a clear, this is what it will look like. There are colored resins too. That would be interesting. So now I'm going to move on to just working on um, the tag that I wanted to do uh, because I'm going to put some of the resin pieces on a tag and then also use it in an art journal. So for here, I'm using my gel plate just to simply get some color smoothed around. I have this um, stamp here, which is actually um, like a letter kind of stamp that you can use it's great if you're doing gel plating I'm not particularly going to be doing that on this one um, but all I'm going to do is use that and stamp right directly on here and you see this awesome impression that I get of all of it I'm hitting it with a quick heat gun so that I can dry it off and then once I have that there I'm actually felt like the card was just a little bit too white for me so I'm going to take some more of that mica powder that I've mixed in with the water uh, I'm going to do some splatters and then actually ink all the edges in this more yellow color to bring that forward um, so you can uh, create almost like a watercolor effect with the mica powders if you use them this way then I'm going to quickly dry them off and then take out that small flower resin piece that I had. Um, I felt like it, the little part on the bottom was a little bit too clear since I didn't actually get the powder in there. So I actually just used the mica powder watercolor like that I created here and painted it. Then I'm going to pull out some of my uh, rub-ons that I have. This was from another month that of... Um, that we had from Trust Truly Kits. One of the great things, if you don't use it all at once, you can always go back and use other parts of the project. Um, it can be used so many different times. Um, again, these are really quick rub-ons. When I do rub-ons, most of the time I'm not looking for perfection. I'm using it almost like a mixed media stamp um, for me personally, uh, but you could do it um, in a way where you get the entire image down. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those all throughout just to given a little bit more of some stamping effect um, here with the use of the rub-ons, put the flower down and then add a sentiment onto it. 
And now my tag is pretty much done once it has that sentiment on it. So I hope you see how quick and easy that you can create a tag um, using all these different aspects. So next, I'm just going to move on to the art journal. I have a little bit of um, some paint. I really wanted to kind of pop up the edging here of this particular one. So I'm using uh, some leftover paint that I have from another project that happened to be on my desk and kind of almost using it like a wax to highlight the ridges that come out in this project. Um, now that I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to do, this is a very, very simple way to use um, mica powders is actually to use it as a base for stamping. I am stamping with some um, Versamark um, ink. Um, anything type of embossing ink will work. Um, again, using the different colors and purely rubbing it in and you see how it sticks the embossing ink and also colors the pages for you so i'm going to do various stamping throughout the journal page using some stamps from my stash um and again kind of sticking with the same color scheme since i used that green and yellow and pink in my initial um, one i'm just going to go ahead and do that again uh, so all you need is some embossing ink and then just rubbing again if you don't want to get as messy definitely feel free to use some gloves here um, but once i have all that down um, one thing i forgot to show in my um, video was that i felt like i needed just a little bit more pop of color so i did go with the same stamps and stamp a little bit and some black versa ink to make those pop out as well I'll do some quick splatters here um, with some of my white ink from my stash. And once I have that all down, I will go ahead and figure out exactly where I would like my resin piece to be. Now, what will sometimes happen when I figure that out is I see that I don't have enough of one particular color that I want to pop. So I'm just inking all the edges of this page um, with some pink um, distress ink. And then I really want a little bit more yellow. So then I went in with um, one of my old Tim Holtz um, stencils, again, using this uh, particular distress oxide ink. I believe this is squeeze lemonade that I'm using. Um, and just to make a little bit more yellow pop up because I didn't use as much as I would like. So once I have that down, I'm also going to take out uh, some of this yarn that I have from my stash. It's like a straw type of effect and literally place it underneath. Using any type of fabric or fibers within your project just adds another dimension onto it. So here is... Um, my final page i just added a sentiment to, to complete it out so i hope you guys enjoy these two super quick projects that i did using the mica powders the tag as well as the album um, and i'm just going to bring it up a little bit closer so you guys can see so look at all the creativity that you can get from one kit from the trust jolie mix media thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon